Nick Edwards was dubbed the first ever surprise act in the show's history when he appeared on ITV's Britain's Got Talent last year. His audition was pre-planned between his wife, Catherine, and the show's production team and sparked a global reaction. His performance of the song Daddy's Little Girl has been viewed well over 300 million times and trended worldwide on YouTube in the top 10 as well within 48 hours of being aired on itv and nick joins me now welcome to the show nick hello phil how are you i'm very good are you okay i'm perfect yeah i'm, I'm in a good place and i'm raring to to continue pursuing my love for music it's, it's been a it's been a great few weeks and i'm looking forward to the release of the ep in a few weeks time indeed yes and um your story by the way just going back to britain's got talent was covered nationally in the uk with appearances on shows such as itv's lorraine and this morning but also yeah. also internationally as far as japan your music is absolutely fantastic um and w recording your um single uh, so your ep which you've just uh, which is just coming out now um what was it like recording that you went all the way over to nashville i believe after um, so, britain's got talent yeah so after britain's got talent finished um i there was obviously a keen um uh, pursuit of the song i sang on the show um because it done so well um on social media and facebook and youtube and it was such a big hit on the show i think it was the second biggest uh second most watched um for, for the entire series but what it did on facebook was well over 300 million which is oh my goodness incredible, which is incredible yeah. you know um and it still gets shared today today so it was really important that i uh I, I i got the single down and released it which i did in september last year um yes. now i i i, I was planned uh, and schemed how I would pull it all together. We decided we really wanted it to be as stripped down as it was on the show, because on the show it's just me and the guitar, right? It is, so yes. So we wanted, we wanted it to be very similar, but we liked the idea if we were going to introduce something, maybe introduce a nice piano to it, just to kind of lift the track up. So it's a very modest track, went across to Nashville, recorded it live, uh, so I played and recorded it live with live piano. Um, yes. And then I released it in September last year. And I think we wrapped up uh, three number ones, uh, probably 14, 15 top tens. And it's been covered in probably well over 35 countries around the world, which is insane. It's absolutely yeah, amazing. And actually, just uh, half an hour before coming on the show, I did actually watch the video uh, of your performance on Sorry. Britain's Got Talent, um, <laughs> singing Daddy's Little Girl and i was quite emotional watching it and um but did you think that the song would actually give that kind of reaction have you actually had you actually performed it before in another kind of area apart no, from no. as you mentioned in your um in the shower yeah i played so i i, I if I, <coughs> I had my, sorry i had my first son um when i was about tw mid 20s yes and at that point i really just didn't have the time to do music so my love for music and songwriting and singing kind of went by the wayside and i focused on work and trying to you know earn a crust for my family really and, and i went to have four uh, four children in total including the two girls that you see so um that's that was one of the songs that i used to play to the girls at home um and um and i i because I, I had no idea i was going on the show and it all just happened very very quickly i had about 40 minutes you don't actually see this in the show but there's about 40 minutes where i go off and i come straight on yes um there's a 40 minute gap where i was allowed to go backstage warm up um and and get things together and they may have uh, to make you, was, did they have to make you up as well I was petrified. Well, no, not no, actually. No. They didn't put any makeup on me. Maybe they thought I was beautiful enough. I don't know. Well, you um, are. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, but I, I went backstage. Had forty minutes. I was petrified. I've never been so scared in my whole entire life. And I was panicking. I was thinking, 
right, Nick, you've played this song so many times and it's yeah. not a hard song to play. It's quite sim simple. Yeah. Um, so I kind of felt like, well, it's the song to do and I knew it so well. But even then, I had this worry in my mind that I was just going to get this this stage kind of block where I'd be standing there yes. and I wouldn't even remember my name. And those people that, that perform and maybe struggle with um, nerves, you know, stage nerves and stuff like that, especially if you haven't done it in a long time, because I've done lots of amateur dramatics and stuff when I was younger and I was never shy of getting up on stage, singing, dancing, making a fool of myself. Yeah, but yeah. if you haven't done it for a while, you do lose some of that, um, you know, some of that uh, armour. Um, you know, and, and so for me, it was such a big thing. And I was petrified that I was going to forget the words. I was petrified that I was just going to freeze up. Um, so I went to, to one of the backstage people. I said, look, I really need you to print these words off for me because if I go on stage and I forget. And they, they initially said, we'll find out. They went back to production and they said, um, we, uh, we, we can't let you take the lyrics off. And it's not something we allow contestants to do. My goodness. And I just, I just, I, and then I really panicked. Uh, and then the guy must have seen me panic. And he came back to me five minutes later saying, send me the lyrics and we'll print them off for you. And all you've got to do is go out there and, and um, we've told the, we've told the judges that, that you've got the, you've got your words and to kind of, you know, so it's part of the show and, and it, that, that was it really. So, but I never looked at the words when I went. No, you didn't. I, I didn't. I was going to, I was going to say, you were, you were like, you were like, as I would say, on, on form there, doing your, doing your thing. And yeah, th I just saw them just sitting on the floor. It's from the heart, right? So when yes, you start singing, I'm, I'm, in my, I'm in the zone. But what's so stupid about me printing off the lyrics is that, I mean, the lyrics would have been like Fontaine or something. You know what I mean? Like, I yes. couldn't have seen them anyway. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe so, it's like a yeah, proper so, so it, it was it was just from the heart from from the get go and mm. and then when I finished and that kind of the gap that you hear because I get asked about this all the time the yes. gap at the end the kind of four or five second gap when no one clapped and it's I can completely understand people wanting to un, wanting to believe or maybe believe in that this all part of the the show and how yes. they how they how they edit it yeah. Is, and, and yeah, some of the show, me walking off and you don't see the 40 minutes and there is always some razzmatazz and, and good editing um, in TV. But yes. that part was absolutely true to what happened. I stopped singing and yes. I genuinely felt like it was... When I felt like an hour, I was just sitting in this time zone for someone to stop the clock. <laughs> yes. And then suddenly they all... I got a standing ovation, everyone went yes, crazy. Yes, and I got so emotional. <laughs> so. Yes, it was a it was an absolutely uh, magical moment in television history, I would say, and it goes down as one of the best, uh, as as it were, um, talent competition moments, I would say, uh, that has Thank ever you. been. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, the reaction was absolutely, absolutely amazing. Um, and I know what you mean. Is, the song's still growing as well. You know, the song is still growing. People are. Uh, uh, is still finding people. Yes. Um, you know, and I, 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 I think that the song has ability to to really get to the hearts of lots of people, and I really hope that it continues to grow from strength to strength, and um, it gets found by people who don't, haven't seen it yet. You know, I really hope that because I mean, the song must have one, one of one of the questions you asked is is how you know how it's impacted people yes I was, i've had so many messages since the show and there are a few that really stand out and one of them was from somebody who's in a war zone fighting um and he's got children at home that he really misses um and he really found the song really helpful yes you know i mean that is insane and 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 to know that it's had such an impact on people they're, they're, I, I even had one that said that they lost their dad maybe 20 years ago mm. and they and they weren't able to get over it and the song helped them find comfort and get over it i mean it's insane um, and so i'm really pleased that, that it's found people not just found people but got into people's hearts really and they've they've taken on and i really hope that people continue to share it and it, and it continues to find new people I think it certainly will. I think it's got the same kind of snowball effect that um, You Raise Me Up had um, all those yeah. years ago. That's still yeah, very much up. covered. Um, yeah, You Raise Me Up. And the original version that I heard um, 
was um, I'm trying to remember what he's what he was called um, from Ireland. Oh, never mind. I'll come back to what he was, was called. The gentleman. I know who you're talking about. Yes, yeah. I forgot his name now. That's terrible. I can see his face on the CD cover yeah. as well. But never mind. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, he originally sung it in any case. But then, oh, but that, but then that wasn't like the famous version, as it were, because then it was when Westlife covered it. That's when yeah. it really um, took off. And like with your um, with your song, I think that's going to be something that's going to um, really stand the test of time. Hopefully, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's uh, it's been an incredible journey so far, but it's not over yet, right? Exactly, it isn't because your musical journey is is just at the pinnacle, and it's it's still. Well, we're, 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 we're trying just to kind of keep keep moving forward. Um, the, the, obviously, the new EP is is out on the twenty third of June. It's a kind of collection of seven tracks in total. Four. Um, one original uh sorry one cover and the rest yes. are original um and i'm doing i'm doing music that for me like for me i fell in love with kind of the country americana kind of american songbook uh, music taking lots of influence from motown and soul music and there's a real influence in 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 the songs from all of those different genres um but i kind of found my heart in with country music and i think that although i'm not um, performing or writing typical kind of country music um, I feel that the songwriting and the songs and the message um, have all come from country and, and the influence of country and, and uh, so for me I'm doing music that I um, um, feel at home doing um, yes and I've not seen on, uh, I just saw on TikTok as well, you've got um, like a, an Elvis track on there, I Got Lucky, yeah. and you yeah. said, "How this is, you know, imagine what it'd be like if it slowed down, and it, it sounded absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I mean, look, the thing is with that, it's interesting actually, so the EP is called 1960 for a reason. The opening track is uh, a song that I wrote, it's an original song, and it depicts the love story between Johnny Cash and June Carter. Um, right. I don't know if you know, too, have you ever seen the film Walk the Line? I haven't, no, I'll have to watch it. Right, so essentially what happens is Johnny Cash finds June Carter, who's a singer on the circuit. She's quite a famous uh, country singer on the circuit, and her family, the Carter sisters, are all uh, well known um, in the in the kind of 50s and 60s, more maybe 40s, 50s and 60s, um, as country artists. Um, and uh, Johnny Cash joined the kind of uh, travelling circus at that time, and he just fell in love with with June. He was married at the time and had kids, and he spent uh, 12 years. Um, a whole host of other things, drug addiction, uh, drink addiction. Um, but he spent 12 years trying to uh, win the heart of June Carter because he was just absolutely obsessed with her. Um, and, and he finally did. He kept asking her to marry him on stage. Um, right. And she kept saying no and no and no and no. Um, so the opening track to the song is my... Uh, is, is depicts the, the love story of June um, and Johnny Cash. Um, I'm a massive Johnny Cash fan, and most of their Johnny Cash's pursuit for for for, for wanting to be with June uh, yeah. happened around the '60s. And then right. going on to the Elvis track, I heard I got lucky, and it's like quite a fast, upbeat song. It, it is. Was in, it was in one of Elvis' films, uh, Kid Galahad. Um, uh, and I actually haven't seen the film, um, actually, but I came across the track and, and, and I can, I just thought, I could just hear in my mind that it, it, it was like a real nice ballad. Yes. And, and I was I was so surprised that the, 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 it's written by three, three, three people who actually wrote quite a lot of Elvis's tracks. Um, right. Elvis didn't write a lot of his tracks, he always had writers for him, but it was written by three people and they wrote it and obviously he never re-recorded it in any other way. It was always recorded as you see it on the, on the, on the programme. Yes. But I just heard, I heard it differently. Um, so we, we slowed it down, we added, a, uh, you know, our own style to it. And I just think, I personally think that if Elvis recorded that, yeah. as slightly slower, I think it could have been a hit for him. It actually wasn't a hit for him. I think he, you know, I don't think he'd done very well at all. And it certainly wasn't the number one. No. Um, so, it, so it's a real kind of obscure track that probably a lot of people um, haven't even heard of. 
Um, no. So so that was appealing as well because it was like, well, if you're going to take on an Elvis track, you don't choose Love Me Tender or something no, like that, no. right? Yes. Stay well clear of those tracks. Yeah. So it kind of was like box ticked, you know, because it's a song that not many people will know of. Probably not many people will have, have even heard it unless they're real diehard Elvis fans. Yeah. Um, they'll be surprised when they hear the Elvis version and then hear this. Um, and I think it's just quite, uh, we've tried to leave it again quite modest and just try and make it as as kind of, you know, true to my style as I can without- Of course. Without taking any of the influence from the Elvis version, which I didn't. Um, no. In fact, I've very rarely actually heard the whole song from uh, the Elvis's version from start to finish. So I've tried not to listen to that too much. And then, um, and then we come up with this version. So that's the only cover on the EP, um, but, I mean, having played my whole EP to friends and family, everyone really loves that track. You know? Yes, um, yes. Yeah, it's a lovely track as well. Um, who are your musical influences? I've, I've heard from a little dicky bird that apparently you like a bit of Motown. Uh, so I'm a big Motown fan, yeah. Um, so my my mum um, grew up in the Motown era, if you like, and, and so she'd go clubbing and Motown was the music, you know. So when I growing up, I just would hear Motown music all the time. Um, and then obviously the Motown stuff crosses over uh, with lots of other music, you know. Yes. I mean, I, I used to listen to all sorts of stuff, but I'd, I'd listen to stuff from like Diana Ross to Ray Charles to, yeah. you know, The Temptations, to yeah. all these kind of things. And I know that, uh -huh. that some of them aren't quintessentially uh, Motown artists, but mm -hmm. Motown was just such an influential kind of era. So for me, I grew up listening to kind of Motown music, but then I had my own interests. So when I was younger, growing, growing up in like the 90s, um, I uh, it, it was very much about the kind of rock stuff kind of started to come into play. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, I, so, so, so that's kind of where I went in my teen years. But then um, as I got older, certainly in my kind of early 20s, that's when I found country music. Right. Now, I, I would listen to, I would listen to, start listening to country music. One of the first bands I ever got into that really sold me on country. And although I listened to, you know, the usual su suspect, Johnny Cash, I've always been a huge fan of, yeah. you know, Dolly Part and all the normal stuff. I, they yeah. were always part of my collection, right? But I was never really delved into country. And then in my early 20s, I came across a band called Zach Brown Band, who have uh who are a massive uh kind of more modern country act uh right. um, bit of an americana sound not too dissimilar to uh to what i'm to, to our sound really is right. influenced them from that as well um and they were singing the stuff they were singing about just really got to me in my heart and i just thought why have i missed this whole genre like yes. how how have, how have i not discovered this and then i ended up going even further and i just thought that if the more country it was the more kind of bluegrassy and country and old sounding it was i loved yeah. it even more so then i got on to like alan jackson for example who is probably yeah. one of the biggest country icons massive in the 80s yes um you know it's a bit of an old timer now but he's still kicking it and and and, and i just love the kind of idea of you know a, a female or, 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 or a male with a guitar just singing a good song you know um so country music of all the influences country music changed my life and, yes. I, and I can say i can honestly say that because i got so i got so emotionally attached to the songs that the the, the, the country artists sing and yes. what they're about and the the emotion it brings and before i liked music loved it loved the sound but mm -hmm. very occasionally um oh, it, it, sorry, only occasionally would it really get to my heart yes but country music country music managed to get to my heart maybe it was just you know where i was in life i was old enough to to you know I was in early teens, I was able to explore my mind a lot more, I was a bit older. It might have something to do with that, but country music most definitely changed my life and it's where I want to, uh, it's where I, where I want to be. And it sounds like it is a perfect fit for you as well. It's like, um, I recently interviewed 
an artist called Lola Lennox and she's the daughter of Annie Lennox and yep. her style she's really got into her own style you know she hasn't gone down you know she's tried all sorts of styles but just seems to fit the style that she's in now and a lot of people are saying that maybe she should sing more like jazzy stuff um, but what she's recording at the moment is very very good and obviously with your um, with your experimentation with your singing styles country is definitely a perfect fit because it's Sounds great on the EP, which yeah, I have well, here. Well, we're, def we're, def we're definitely not trying to kind of copy anything. We're just trying to maybe take the influences. And what's great is that as people are hearing the new single, which is Into You, which yes. you can pre... So if you pre-order the EP on the 1st of June, you get the single instantly. And right. then you get the rest of the tracks on the 23rd of, um, of June when the EP comes out. But yes. it's great to hear people leaving messages and stuff to almost say like this the sound sounds yeah you've got the influence but this sounds new it sounds like a new sound yeah. um and that's great because it means we're capturing we're staying in our lane we're not trying to reinvent something we're no. really trying to stay in our lane and that's something that that as a as, as a singer songwriter and an artist that's what you want to achieve you don't want to you know you don't want to come out and be called the next Ed Sheeran and you want to be exactly you want, you want to have your name and your identity and and so um and so it's great you know and and uh for me I've always loved the 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 grasp of a soul voice yes so and that's where I really love exploring myself vocally so with the soul stuff and the kind of Certainly the influence of pop music and the structure of songs in pop music is definitely a big part of it. And then the kind of American songbook, the American culture and uh, and the country music. So a fusion of all of those things. So yeah, I'm just really hoping it continues to gather momentum and people like what I'm doing. Well, talking about the future and this year, uh, you're scheduled to travel to Nashville to begin filming an independent uh, documentary titled Road to the Opry. Can you tell us yeah. more about that? So, the opera, the op do you know much about the Opry? It's uh, quite a staple. Uh, I have had a, li I had, had a little look at it. Is, it. is it like the equivalent to the Greek theatre is over in America? Yeah, so, so essentially, it started in 1925 as a radio show and it still is a radio show so every time they do a show they uh they put it out over the radio um, oh my and it started it started as a bit of a jamboree kind of um you know show um but i think it was once a week um and it was uh it's been at lots of different venues because they always needed to venue to stage the event yes um and uh, it's, so it started in 1925. It's going to be a hundred years. It's the longest running radio show in the world. Oh my goodness! A hundred years. So um, yeah, that's an interesting fact. But it's moved to various different locations. Um, it was originally it spent a long time at the Ryman in Nashville, downtown Nash Nashville. The right. Ryman is 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 the the Ryman is almost the mother church of country music. Um, it's where all you know anyone. Anyone who's a country, a famous or upcoming country music star or an established country music star will play at the Ryman. Um, but the Opry obviously has its, you know, its hundred, nearly a hundred year history. Um, yes. So I'm traveling over in a couple of weeks. So we've got about four weeks to go, uh, four or five weeks to go. And then me and uh, a, 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 a doc, documentary maker are going over to Nashville to start filming. Um, right. Uh, an independent documentary which we've labelled Road to the Opry. Now, I uh, it's my dream and aspiration to go out and play at the Opry. How, yes. how it works is they have... What's great about the Opry is that they have... Um, not Well, not only is it, is it steeped in, in history and mm. everyone who you can think of in who has American cultural country acts from Dolly yes. Parton to Johnny Cash to everyone has played on the Opry stage or been part of the Opry at some point. In fact, Johnny Cash was actually banned from the Opry for a little bit because he smashed some of the lights on stage, I think, or, oh, no. mic or something like that. But they obviously welcomed him back a few years later because he's such a, a cultural icon. But anyway, anyone who's anyone in country music has been through the Opry. It's almost like a kind of... The, the school of, of country music, if you like. And, yes. and they also they also open their doors up to 
um, up to new talent um, right. coming through. Um, so it's almost like it's almost like um, kind of the, the the first door into country music, right. and and it also stages you know the old timers as well that have been they've been in it for for ages, um, and it would be the pinnacle for me to go out and play on the opera stage and how they do it is they normally invite uh on one evening it's like an hour show uh hour and a half mm-hmm. show something like that with an interval um and they have maybe kind of six or seven acts on one night and they all come out and play maybe two or three songs each with right. the opry band so my dream is to play the opry um and we are going out in the hope to uh pursue that dream to meet people linked to the opry to find out more about how it's uh how it's culturally impacted the music industry and uh, and Nashville, obviously. Yes. Um, and being a big fan of country music and Nashville in general, I'm excited to go and uh, start that journey. Um, it may take it may take us a few years to to get to the Opry, but yes. um, you know. But but um, I think doing Britain's Got Talent and having the success I did have on the show yes it's it's given me a kind of new lease of life that if you want something you really have to go and get it so this is a real true life story of you know i have no links to the opry i know very few people from the opera don't be frozen free but i'm going to nashville in hope that one day i can go and get the opry it'll be absolutely fantastic yeah, I've still got you. Um, so, going. So, will this be something which is going to be shown on um, maybe um, Prime Channel or something like that? Or is it something that's well, going to yeah. be released I mean, independently? I mean, I'm hoping that by the time we get to the. I mean, we're just exploring it, obviously, now mm. starting the process, and we're going to be meeting some people in Nashville. Um, without mentioning any names, one person is very well linked to the to the opera right. country music. Um, and uh, we're going to be speaking to some people meeting up with some people and just really trying to get to the culture of of the opera and 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 what it stands for and uh, you know and 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 the impact that it's had on on country music but um i'm hope we're hopeful that um that as as the story progresses yes and when we get nearer to the point where there's a chance we may even play it then we can ramp it up and hopefully try and find at the moment you know at the moment it's an independent documentary that we're yes. doing um you know and, and and we don't really have a huge expectation in terms of kind of the distribution side of it at the moment we're just going to try and live the dream and to get of the, course and to get there you know we, we, we're trying to we're trying to capture it from a really organic place and try and go through the process you know i'd love nothing more than to capture this real base level part of the process yes you know um all the way through to three or four years time actually getting to the stage and having that whole uh, process yes you know, yes um, documented as it documented were. And, and and so that's essentially where we're coming from and then um depending on where it goes i think we'll just take it day to day but we'll definitely be looking for distributors to try and help get it out and if worse comes to worse we're going to be looking we'll look at some of the 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 kind of uh, the, the online media outlets there's lots out there there's lots of ways in which we can get it out there and, mm-hmm. and get people to see it because nowadays it's so easy to to get stuff out there but i'm just really hoping that a we i managed to get to go to the opry i mean i don't want to be in a situation where well I, I wouldn't mind but i'm hopefully it will come soon and so i don't want to be in a situation where i'm 70 and i finally get to go out and play the opera although it'd be a <laughs> no it'll be before then it? long um, yeah. it'll be very soon i'm gonna yeah, so so yeah that's essentially it and, and we'll see where it goes we're taking it day by day indeed i can see it going on sky yachts watch this space sky Art, yeah, yeah yeah that's the kind of thing because i remember um it was um brian johnson of acdc he did a tour of america and he met up with all of his old pals like billy joel and people like that and when oh, yeah. i watched that it was like um maybe a six or seven programs and um maybe that's something uh, maybe sky may pick it up but there you go yeah, then well, you'll have to keep up def- to date 
we'll definitely have some conversations uh, but yeah we're just trying to i mean look why can't i go over to nashville and play the opry if it's something i want to do in my heart of, heart. of course so we're yes. going out we're, we're going out in search of the opry and, I, and, and and i'm really hopeful that um my my journey can continue flourishing and things can continue growing um i've definitely got the heart and the steam to do it um, exactly and hope hopefully it works out yeah i'm um, exactly the same philosophy i'm like get it now do it now do what do what you want to do now in life because you only get one life and you're a yeah. long time dead as they say but exactly so exactly. yes that i think it's going to be a massive success for it so if you can keep us up to date nick that would be absolutely fantastic now getting back to your ep which you mentioned early which is called 1960 which includes the single into you which you said is released on the 23rd of june 2023 and is absolutely fabulous and i do actually love i got lucky which i mentioned earlier on but um where did you well you did you did you record the whole album did you say in nashville no so i yeah, recall we, we actually recorded um that ep here although some of the mixing and mastering some of the process went over to nashville um when i go over to nashville in a few weeks we're actually going to be recording again uh, because right. we're, we're going to be releasing another single probably in october time um so we're going over obviously to do the documentary stuff but record again but this ep was predominantly recorded here in england in, in london and it's absolutely fantastic and i've got it right here it's, yeah. it's absolutely amazing absolutely amazing well have you got any other projects that you'd like to tell us about that's coming up in the future other than the opry um so look not really i'm i except we are in the process of trying to get our lives set together so that we can really take it to the road um i don't want to do it too prematurely um so i think maybe towards the end of the year i'm hoping to announce some live shows Right, that'll be fabulous. So um, you'll have to let us know all about that as well. And I'll let all the listeners know here on Radio Shields and all my other radio programmes as well. And finally, could you introduce your new single, which is Into You, from the fabulous EP, which is out now. Yeah, so my name's Nick Edwards, and I'm delighted to uh, for you to hear my new single, Into You, which is part of my next EP, uh, titled 1960. Um, it's officially out on the 23rd of June, um, but if you pre-order it on iTunes from the 1st of June, uh, so in a few days' time, uh, you'll be able to get the single instantly. That's fabulous. Well, thank you so much, um, Nick, for joining me on the show. Thank you. Cheers, Phil. I appreciate you having me. And marvellous. And keep in touch and good luck with your documentary. Thank you. See you at the Opry. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Phil. Wake up! It's a beautiful morning with Phil Wilson in the morning on Radio Shields.